Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on this channel where I will be showing you how to make a car racing game in Python using Pygame. Now Pygame is one of my favorite modules in Python. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial series using it. So I kind of came up with this game right here, which actually fun fact is one of the first games I ever created using a software called Game Maker. So I kind of recreated it in Python and it turns out to actually be pretty complicated to implement and makes a really good tutorial. Anyways, let me explain who this tutorial is for and then I will demo the game to you. So this tutorial is kind of designed for intermediate programmers. If you are a beginner, you can definitely follow along. I'll try my best to explain everything as always, but this is going to use quite a bit of kind of more advanced Python syntax or more intermediate Python syntax. And so if you haven't seen object oriented programming before, it might be a little bit difficult to follow along. But again, I will try my best to explain. With that said, this will probably be five videos, maybe two and a half hours of content. Everything you need will be linked in the description in each video. All of the assets you see here, most of them I actually made myself. And of course, they're free to download from the description. All of the code that I write in each video will be uploaded to GitHub. So you can look at the code per video, not just the finished code. And yeah, with that said, that's pretty much everything you need to know. So let me demo the game for you and then we will start actually writing the code. So the idea behind this game is we have two cars. One car is kind of the player car, so the red car. The other one is the computer, right? So the green car. Now, the objective is to simply beat the green car to the finish line at every single level. Now, you can see right now that the green car is going quite slow, but as the levels increase, it increases in speed and well, it gets progressively more difficult. Now, I always like to leave my games pretty basic and then allow you guys to kind of add on to them. So something you could do to make this more challenging is add obstacles. You could add like, I don't know, oil or something on the track so that you would slip if you hit it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. What I'll be showing you in this tutorial will allow you to kind of add that stuff as you continue. Now you can see here we moved on to level two. Notice the car will get progressively faster. And then this game goes up to 10 levels. The last level has the green car almost as fast as the red car. And so if you beat that last level there, then you win the game. Anyways, I won't keep playing through this, but this is a pretty complicated thing to actually make. I know it looks trivial, but to allow the car to move in this way, to have this car follow a path, to have a collision with a track that's kind of not square, right? not rectangular collision, to have the finish line, to increment levels, to change speeds. There's a lot going on here, and this is a really good kind of learning experience from this tutorial. Anyways, enough of this long introduction. I apologize. Let's go ahead and get into the code. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now we have some setup steps that we need to walk through. And then once we do that in this first video, I'm going to show you how we can move a car around the screen. I know that seems trivial, but we're going to implement acceleration, velocity, braking and slowing down uh, and a bunch of other stuff like actually changing the angle of the car and determining the horizontal and vertical displacement of the car based on its angle. So it's actually pretty complicated. And that's why this video will be, you know, the length it is. It's probably pretty long, although I haven't filmed it yet, obviously. And anyways, before we can do all that, we need to set up our environment. So I'm here in Visual Studio Code. Feel free to use whatever editor you want. And the first thing we're going to want to do here is download all of the assets for the game. So I'll just walk through them kind of one by one because I actually made almost all these assets myself. So hopefully you guys are impressed by that. But we have a finish line. We have this grass, which is kind of the background. I didn't make this. I found this on Google Images. We have a green car. I made this. I was impressed that I made this with pixel art. Hopefully you guys like that too. We have a gray car. We have a bunch of other cars uh, as well. I just made a bunch of different colors so you guys could swap the colors if you want, but I'm using green and red. And then obviously we have the red car and then we have our track border. I'll discuss why we need this in a second. And then we have our track. So notice this track kind of has some white outlines. The reason for that is I took this from Google Images and then removed the background from it in Photoshop. I'm not very good at doing that, so that's why it looks the way it does. Feel free to use any track that you want. But what you will need if you use a different track is you will need the border or kind of like the yeah, I guess you'd call it border. I guess you could call it the walls or the outline of the track as well. You'll see why we need this, but this is how we're going to handle collision by using kind of just the edges to determine if our car has actually gone off of the main track. And that's how we're going to bounce our car backwards. So again, you need the main track like this, and then you would need the track border. You could do it with just the border as well, and then you could have some background uh, kind of beneath the border. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but 
I'm kind of just explaining why we have these two images here. Then, of course, we have the white car. Again, this is just so you guys can have some options when we're using the cars. Great. So download all of those again, link in the description. It should download a zip folder and then you can extract extract the zip folder story by right clicking on it and get all of the images. Now that we have that, what we need to do is install Pygame. So what you're going to do is go in your terminal or command prompt and type pip install Pygame like that. Now, for some reason, this doesn't work. I have two videos on this channel. I'll link them in the description as well. They'll walk through all of the possible ways that installing Pygame could go wrong and how to fix them. So I'll refer you to those two videos there. For some reason, you cannot install Pygame. So watch those and then come back. Great. Obviously, I already have Pygame installed, so we are good to go. Now that we've done that, I'm going to make a Python file. In fact, I already have one called main.py outside of the images directory, but inside of the folder where my project is going to be. All right, so now that we've got all of that set up, I'm inside of the main.py file and we're going to start writing some code. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just import Pygame because we're going to need that. A few other imports we'll need as well. It's going to be import time. And then I'm just looking at my cheat sheet here. In fact, if you notice me looking to the right, it's because I have all of the code already written just so that I don't get lost as I'm going through this tutorial. Uh, we're also going to import math. We'll be using a lot of stuff from the math module. Now that we've done that, the first thing I actually want to do is just load in all of my images. The reason I'm doing that now is because we actually need some of the images to set up some other things you're going to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is load in my grass. So in all capitals, I'm going to say grass. The reason all capitals is because this is a constant. This is not going to change. So that's the convention. I'm going to say pygame.image.load and I'm going to put the path to my image, which is going to be images slash and then grass dot PNG like that. So now I have my grass. Next, I'm going to load my track. So I'm going to say track is equal to pygame.image.load. It's going to be images slash track dot PNG like that. After we do that, we will load in our track border. So I'm going to say track underscore border like that is equal to pygame.image.load. And this will be track hyphen border. Let's make sure that's the correct name. Uh, looks like it is. OK, great. And now that we have the track border, we can load in the finish line. So I'll just say finish is equal to that. And then this will be finish.png. And then we can load in our cars. So we'll say red car is equal to, and then this will be red hyphen car. And then we will have our green car. Let's make sure that's all capitals. And then green car like that. Now, of course, feel free to swap these cars if you want. I don't think I need to explain how to do that, but you would just change the name inside of here and then the corresponding variable name. Great. So now that we've done that, what I want to do is start displaying some of these images on the screen. But first, I need to actually set up a screen or set up what's known as kind of the display surface. So what I'm going to do here is say that my window or my win in all capitals is going to be equal to Pygame dot display dot set underscore mode. And then the mode that I need to set inside of here is a tuple containing the width and the height of my display. Now, the width and the height of this display, I actually want to be equal to the size of my track. So whatever the track size is, that's how big I want my Pi game display to be. So what I'm going to do here is say width comma height is equal to and then track dot get underscore width and then track dot get underscore height like this. So a little trick in Python, whenever you have a surface, which is what this does, it loads in an image and renders it as a surface or stores it as a Pi game surface. You can get the width and the height of that surface by using get width and get height. So we're going to get the width and the height of our track. And then I'm going to say that I want a display that is of size width height. And that is obviously corresponding to the size of the track. Now that I have set up the window, I'm just going to give my window a name. So I'm going to say win dot and then this will be set underscore caption like that. And I'm just going to say racing game exclamation point like that. OK, so now that we have our window set up, we should see if we run the code here. Uh, let's see. Uh, no such file or directory images grass dot PNG. OK, that's interesting. Let's see why that's happening. Uh, oh, it's grass.jpg. Well, that makes sense. So let's fix that. Let's run this now. And then we should see a Pygame window pops up and then it just immediately goes away uh, because apparently it has no attribute set caption. 
Interesting. I believe that's because this is actually the correct one. Pygame.display.sat underscore caption. My apologies again. That's going to happen a lot. I'm going to make mistakes in this video. Let's run this code now, though, and see what we get. And there we go. Perfect. So everything is working as we would expect. The reason the window is not staying on the screen is because we haven't made it stay on the screen yet. OK, so now we have loaded in some of our images. The next thing that I want to do is actually show some of them on the screen. So I'm going to set up my event loop. I'm going to say, well, run, and then I'm going to make a variable here that says run equals true. Now, the event loop in Python is kind of a constant loop or in Pygame, sorry, that is going to be handling all of your collision, all of your movement, all of your events, like the user pressing a key. And so the first thing you usually do is you set up this main event loop, and that's what keeps the window alive, right? Keeps it running on the screen. And then as soon as you quit the window or the game ends, then you would destroy the event loop and destroy the game, and then the window would disappear. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense, but we're going to say run equals true while run. Now inside of here, I'm going to say the following for event in Pygame dot event dot get. This is going to give us a list of all of the events and then we can loop through them. And the first event that we want to check is if the user has closed the window. So if they press the X in the top right hand corner. So the way we do that is we say if event dot type is equal to Pygame dot quit, then we're going to say run is equal to false. We're going to break out of this for loop right here. And then underneath this while loop, I'm going to say pygame.quit. Now, this will just close the window cleanly for us. So the idea is if we press the quit button, we make run equal false, we exit the while loop, and then, well, we would quit the game. Awesome. So now that we have that, if I run my code, we should see that it says racing game, window shows up, everything's fine. And then if I click X, it closes. There we go. And that is some good progress. OK, so now that we have that, what I want to do is set up a clock. Now, what a clock does is make sure that our window is not going to run faster than a certain frame per second that, or than a certain speed is probably what I should say. So right now, this while loop is going to run as quickly as our processor can handle. So if you have a really quick processor, it's going to run faster than if you have a really slow processor. But the thing is, when I have this game, I want it to run at the same speed on every single person's computer, right? Or I want it to at least have a maximum speed so one person can't be going like super fast down the track. Meanwhile, on a slower computer, they're going really slow just because their processor can't handle it. So I'm going to set up a clock and this clock will fix that for us. So I'm going to say clock is equal to pygame dot time and then dot clock with a capital C. Then up here, I'm going to say FPS standing for frames per second is equal to 60. Right at the top of my while loop, I'm going to say clock like this dot tick and I'm going to tick by FPS. Now, what this does is make sure that this while loop cannot run faster than 60 frames per second. OK, so if you change this number, then that will change how quickly this while loop can run. Hopefully that makes sense. But if we run the code now, we should see that it's just working the exact same. We're not really going to see a difference because we're not drawing anything on the screen. OK, so now that we've done that, I want to draw some of these images on the screen and just see the size of them. And then we're going to kind of position them and redraw them just to make sure they look good. So let's go inside of here and let's start by doing this Pygame dot display, not clear, but dot update. Now, this is a method that you need to run every single time you want what you've drawn on the screen to actually be drawn. So what you can kind of do in Pygame is you can draw a bunch of stuff. And then as soon as you've drawn it onto the screen, you update the display and then it will show all of the stuff that you've drawn. So in this case, I want to start by drawing this grass background and the track over top of it. So let's do that. We're going to say Pygame, uh, actually not Pygame. We're going to say win, which is the name of our window dot blit. This is what you do when you want to draw an image onto the screen. We're going to put the image we want to draw. So I want to draw grass. And where do I want to draw this? At position 00. zero. Now, the coordinate system for Pi game is 00, zero is at the top left hand corner. I guess top left would be there for you guys. And then as you go down, the Y increases. So the bottom of the screen would be the largest Y value. And as you go to the right, the X increases. So the furthest right would be the largest X value. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, the X increases as you go right. Perfect. So let's run this now. Let's see if grass is showing up and notice grass is showing up. Now it's not quite large enough. We'll make it larger in a minute, but for now we can see it on the screen. So now that we've done that, we want to draw the track. So I'm going to say win.blit 
and then track like that. And we'll draw the track at zero, zero. Now notice the order I've drawn this. I've done the grass first and then the track second. That's so the track will show up over top of the grass. If you did it in the other order, well, you would get it in the other way. Let's run it now. And notice now we have our track and that the size of the window is exactly kind of the size of the track here, right? So now what we need to do is draw the finish line and we also need to increase the size of the grass. And I actually want to make the track a little bit smaller because it's taking up a bit too much room on the screen for my liking. So let's just draw the finish line. Now we'll say win dot blit like that. And then we'll say finish and we'll just draw this at zero zero as well, just so we can see what it looks like. And then that's the finish line that might actually be a good size, but we might need to make that a bit smaller as well when we change the size of this stuff. OK, so now that we've done that, we need to change the size of some of these images. So to do that, I want to write a function. The reason I want to write a function is just going to make it a lot easier for us to scale our image rather than having to manually write the same thing a bunch of times. So I need to go look at my cheat sheet here and we're going to write the following function define scale underscore image. This is going to take in an image and a scale factor. Now, the factor is like if I give two, it's going to scale it by two X. If I give 0 0.5, it's going to shrink it by a factor of two or shrink it or I guess multiply it by a factor of 0 0.5, right? Whatever way you want to think of it, but that's kind of how it works. So now I'm going to say the size, this will be the new size is going to be equal to round. And then this is going to be image dot get underscore width multiplied by the factor. The reason we need to round this is because we need to have integers when we scale the image. We cannot have decimal values. So we'll do that. Now let's copy this. We're going to go comma. And instead of get width now, we're going to do get height. And again, we're going to multiply it by the factor. So this will give us a tuple that contains the new width and the new height of our image. Then what we're going to do is return uh, like this pi game dot trend form dot scale and then we're going to pass the image and we're going to pass the new size that we want this image to be. Let me make sure that's right. Looks like it is. So that will allow us to scale our image. Now, the thing is, I don't really want this function kind of cluttering up my main file. So what I'm going to do just to clean things up a little bit here is I'm going to make a new file called utils.py. And inside of utils.py, I'm going to put utility functions that are going to be used from inside of this main file. So inside of here, I'm just going to import this function. And at the top of the program, I'm going to say import pie game like that, just because we need access to pie game in here to use this pie game function. Great. So now rather than having this function here, I'm just going to say from utils import and we will import scale underscore image like that. Great. So now we can use scale image. So the first thing I want to do is I want to scale my grass. So I want to say scale image. I'm going to pass this image to scale. And then what do I want to scale it by? Let me check here and see. For now, we'll try with 2.5. We might want to change that, but that's what we'll go with right now. And then for my track, I don't really want to shrink this too much, but I want it to be a bit smaller. So I'm just going to scale it by 0 0.9. OK, so now we've scaled the track and the grass. While we're at it, I'm just going to scale the track border to be the same size as my track. The reason for that is I need the border to be the same size. Otherwise, we're going to have come some weird collision errors in the future. So let's make this 0 0.9 and then the finish line will leave like that for now. OK, so let's run this and notice that that looks a little bit better. The grass is taking up the full screen. Track is a bit smaller. Everything looks good. Now let's just draw a few cars and then let's scale those. So let's go down here and rather than blitting the finish line, let's blit a car. So let's just go with red underscore car. All the cars are the same size. So if you scale one, you can scale all of them. Uh, notice the car is a little bit big. I'd like that to be a bit smaller because we want to be able to fit two cars on the track kind of parallel or beside each other. So let's make the car a bit smaller. Let's go to red car. Let's go scale image. And that should not be in all capitals. Let's go scale image like that. And we're going to scale this to 55%, so 0 0.55. And then we'll do the same thing here, scale image and 0 0.55. Okay, now let's run it and let's look at our car. And that is a much better size. Sweet. So now we have drawn pretty much what we need to onto the screen. However, what I would like to do is kind of clean this up a bit. And we're going to notice we're going to continually be cleaning and refactoring stuff as we go through this. I want to take all of the stuff related to drawing and I want to put this in a separate function. 
just to make sure that I know where all of my drawings being done and I'm not drawing, you know, like 100 things inside of this while because that's going to get really messy really quickly. So I'm going to make a function up here called draw. Now, the reason I'm not going to put this inside of the utils function is because this is very heavy or very correlated to the game, whereas the stuff inside of utils.py, I could use this in any game, whereas this draw function is going to be used only in this game, right? So it kind of makes more sense to be in this file. Anyways, I'm going to take a window that I want to draw stuff on, and then I'm going to take images that I want to draw. And then inside of here, I'm going to say four, and we're going to go with IMG in images. I'm going to say win dot blit, and then I'm going to blit the IMG. And we're actually going to say IMG comma pause, and you'll see why in a second. And I'm going to blit it at this position. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my images are equal to and I'm going to make a list containing images and their positions that I want to draw them on the screen. So I'm going to say grass and I want to draw this at zero zero. And then I'm going to say track and I again want to draw this at zero zero. And for now, we won't draw the car. We're going to draw that a bit differently. So now inside of here, I need to call this draw function. I need to pass in my window, which is a capital win, and then my images like that. So now if we run the code, we should get the same thing we got before and we do all is working. OK, so that is all good. Now we want to draw the car and we want to move the car around the screen. And the thing with the car is we need it to be able to change its position. We need to be able to rotate the car, right? So it can go left, it can go right, because that's how we're going to be able to turn. We have to be able to turn around the track and well, we need to turn the heading of the car. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have over 160 coding interview questions on the platform, and I am one of the instructors on that platform, so you can be sure there are great explanations for each of those questions. Check them out from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So what I'm going to do here is set up a class and this class is going to handle all of that stuff for our car. So I'm just going to say class and I'm actually going to make in what's known as an abstract class. I'm going to say abstract car like this. Now, let's see why we need this in a minute. But the idea is we're going to have both a player car and a computer car. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that's common to both of these cars. So we're going to put all of the common stuff in an abstract class. This is a class that's not meant to be instantiated, but it's meant to act as the base class for the other two classes. If you're not familiar with inheritance, don't worry about it too much. Just understand that all of the stuff I put inside of here is going to be used by both my player car and my computer car. And that's the point of this. So inside of abstract car, I need to go and look at my code here to remember what I put. I am going to define an init. Now I'm going to say define init like this. And inside of here, we're going to take self. We're going to take a X and a Y. Um, actually, no, we don't want an X Y. We're going to go with max velocity as our first parameter. And as our second parameter, we're going to go with the rotation underscore velocity. So the reason I want both of these is because I want to know the maximum speed my car can go. So the maximum velocity. And I also want to know how quickly my car can rotate. So it's rotation velocity. And then inside of here, I'm going to say self dot max underscore vel is equal to max underscore vel. I'm going to say self dot vel equals zero. The reason why the starting velocity is zero is because your car is not moving when it starts. It has a velocity of zero. And I'm going to say self dot rotation velocity is equal to rotation vel. And then I'm going to say self dot angle is equal to zero. And the point of this is that our car will start at an angle of zero. And then when we change the angle, that will change the way that the car is rotating. OK, so now that we have that, the first thing I want to handle is just rotating the car. So I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to say define rotate like that. I'm going to take a self, a left is equal to false and a right is equal to false. Now you're going to pass left equals true if you want to rotate to the left and right equals true if you want to rotate to the right. Now inside of here, all I need to do is say if left, I'm going to say self dot angle and then this is going to be plus equal and then self dot rotation velocity like that. And then if we are moving to the right, it's going to be the opposite. So we're going to say LF right then self dot angle minus equals self dot rotation bell. And now that I'm thinking about it, when I'm going to the right, my angle is increasing. When I'm going to the left, my angle is decreasing. So I actually think it might need to be the other way around. Um, or maybe I'm crazy here. You know what? We'll leave it like this for now. And if for some reason we're rotating in the inverse direction, then we'll change this. 
I think this is right. Uh, I'm just confusing myself. Okay, so now we have rotate. I'm just looking at anything else we might need here. For now, that actually looks good. So what we can do is call the rotate method, and then depending on if we're going left or right, we'll rotate to the left or right. The way we rotate is by changing the angle. However, we need to actually rotate the car, right? We can change the angle in this class, but that's not going to change the position of the car image. So what we need to do is find a way to actually draw the car image rotated. So we need to know how to rotate the image in Pygame. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but I'm going to go inside of utils.py and I'm going to write a function that can take an image and return to you a rotated image based on an angle. So let's do that. We're going to say define blit underscore rotate underscore center. And what this is going to take is a surface. This is where we want to draw the uh, actually let's call this win. This is where we want to draw the rotated image. Then we're going to say the image. We're going to say the top underscore left. And we're going to say the angle. OK, so I'm just going to write this function. Then I'll explain a little bit about what's going on after. But I will note that rotating an image in Pygame is not trivial. If you're going to be rotating an image, you can just normally rotate it. But if you do that, you're going to get all kinds of distortions. And the reason for that is the rectangle that contains the image. So I should say every single image in Pygame is really a rectangle. And then the actual image is inside of that rectangle. So even if it doesn't look like a rectangle, there is a rectangle that's containing the image. So when you rotate the image, you're also rotating the rectangle. And based on the position that you're rotating the rectangle around, you can get really kind of weird, like, you know, morphing and distortions occurring with the image. So that's why we need whatever we're doing here. So I'm going to say a rotated image is equal to Pygame. And I believe this is dot transform. It is dot transform dot rotate. And we're going to pass the image and the angle that we want to rotate. Now, what this will do is rotate the image around the top left hand corner. Now, that's no good. We don't want to rotate the image around the top left hand corner because that's going to lead to us kind of having like a circle around that um, stationary point. Instead, we want to rotate around the center of the image. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say new rectangle is equal to rotated image like this. And this is going to be dot get underscore rect. And we're going to say that the center of this rect is equal to image dot and then get underscore rect like this. And we're going to say that the top left, so top left like that, is equal to the top underscore left. And then inside of here, we're going to say dot center. Okay, so what's happening here is pretty complicated, but I will try my best to briefly explain it. I have to admit, I did take this code from Stack Overflow. I didn't come up with this on my own. Anyways, point being, we rotate the original image. When we rotate this image, I'll show you in a second, we get all kinds of weird distortions. And the actual X and Y of the image is going to change based on how it's rotating around the top left hand corner. So then we have our new rectangle. So we say the new rectangle is equal to the rotated image dot get rectangle. The point of this is we want to remove the offset. So we want to make it so that we rotate the image without changing the X and Y position of the image on the screen. That's what this whole line is trying to do for us. So we're saying let's get a rectangle from the new rect, but let's make its center equal to the image, the original image, its rectangle at the top left hand corner position and then whatever the center of that is. So we're getting the original image. We're saying the top left hand corner of that original image is equal to whatever its X and Y position is because the image doesn't know its X and Y position. So we need to set the top left hand corner explicitly to be equal to that. Then we're saying let's get the center of that. And wherever that center is, the new image needs to still be on that center. So that way we're only rotating from the center of the image, not from the top left. But we had to originally rotate from the top left because that's the only way to rotate an image in Pygame. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And then what we're going to do is say this. We are going to say win dot blit and we're going to blit the rotated image and we're going to do this at the new rect dot top left. So the whole idea of this new rectangle is to find the correct X and Y position of the new rectangle such that it's going to be in the same position as it was before. But now it's rotated. All right. <laughs> a lot of uh, complicated code there, but there you go. That will blit it and rotate it in the center for us. So let's go to main.py now and let's define a method inside of abstract car that can draw the car for us. We're going to say define draw and then we're going to take in self and we're going to take in a window. All we're going to do is the following. We are going to say first we need to import this. Uh, I believe this was blit underscore rotate center. Yes, it was. So we're just going to say inside of here blit 
underscore rotate center. And then we're going to pass self dot IMG. Actually, we're going to pass wind sorry and self dot IMG, which we've yet to define, which we'll do now. So we're going to go to abstract car. And we're going to say self dot IMG. Actually, not up here. What am I doing? Sorry, we're going to do it inside of here. We're going to say self dot IMG is equal to. And then here I'm going to say IMG is equal to. And we are just going to reference one of the images that we want for this car. So in this case, I want the red underscore car. I'm going to say self dot IMG is equal to self dot IMG. Understand this is a little bit weird. What we're doing here is saying the following. We're going to store inside of the class the image that should be used for this class. So in this case, I want it to be a red car. Then I say the self dot image, so the image specific to this instance is equal to self dot IMG. So whatever the image is here. And then inside of here, we then reference that image so that we can rotate it and well, blit it in the center. OK, that's all great. However, I need to first make a way to actually rotate my car before we can see if this is working. So let's let's actually just draw the car first. Let's make a car. I'm going to say car is equal to and first we should create a concrete instance of this class. So I'm going to say class. I'm going to go with player car like that. Now inside of here, all I'm going to do is just copy this. I'm going to remove it from abstract car because now we have this class. And that's actually all I need inside of player car. But I need to make sure I inherit from abstract car. So let me just explain this quickly in case this is a bit confusing. We have the abstract car class. This defines a bunch of functionality. When we put it inside of the brackets like this, we're saying we're going to use everything from inside of here. So imagine all of this is just copy and pasted right inside of player car. The only thing we're doing differently here is we're defining image inside of here, and then it will be used inside of the initialization when we instantiate this car class. OK, that was a lot of big words, but let's continue. So I'm going to go here and say car. Actually, we'll go with player underscore car is equal to player car like that. Now we need to pass to this a maximum velocity and a rotation velocity. So for now, I'm going to go with four, four. Uh, feel free to change that to make it slower or faster. Obviously, the higher number, the faster it will go. And now let's just draw the car. So inside of draw, I'm now going to pass my player car. So that means we need to now take player underscore car. And now we're going to say player underscore car dot draw. And then inside of here now, I'm going to take my pygame dot display dot update. I'm just going to put this right inside of the draw function so that everything related to drawing is contained in one place. OK, so that should draw our car. Let's see if this is working and required one uh, required missing one required position argument win. Uh, OK, player car dot draw. That would be right here. So we just need to make sure we pass our window to the draw method. So let's run this now. And we got an error. Uh, blit rotate center missing two required positional arguments, top left and angle. Of course, I forgot those. Let's fix that. So we need to pass the top left hand position. Now, the top left hand position is actually going to be equal to the X and the Y of the car, which we haven't defined yet. So we're going to do that now. We're going to say self dot X self dot Y is equal to self dot start underscore position. Pause like that, sorry. And then inside of here, we're going to say start underscore pause is equal to and then we're going to define what the starting position should be. So I'm just going to say actually, let me just go look at my other code and see where I started it before I was starting it at 180. Uh, was that right? Let's see 180 and 200. OK, so we'll go 180 and 200. OK, so now our self and X self dot X and self dot Y is equal to the starting position, which we've defined here. And inside of here, we now need to pass that. So we're going to say self dot x self dot y and then we want to pass the angle and the angle is just going to be self dot angle like that okay let's run this now and let's see what we get okay so there we go our car is now drawn here now let's just see if changing the angle actually does anything so let's go and make the angle 90. let's see where we go now notice we are facing left Perfect. That's what we would expect. OK, now let's make the angle 180. We should be upside down now. And there we go. So we are getting the car in the correct position. Sweet. So let's make that back to zero. And now let's make it so we can change the angle based on pressing a key. So we're going to go and I'm going to write the following inside of my main event loop. 
Remember, anything in the event loop is kind of handling events, handling collision, handling all of those types of things. So this is where we would put you know key presses and moving the car. So I'm going to say keys is equal to pygame dot key dot get underscore pressed like that. And then what I want to do is check if we pressed a specific key. So I'm going to say if keys and then I'm going to go pygame dot K. Notice that's a capital underscore and then a. So I want to use WASD to move my car. So this would be left if I'm pressing on the A key. So if I'm doing that, then I want to say player underscore car dot rotate left is equal to true. OK, let's copy this and then let's go here and say if keys pi game K underscore D. So this would be right. Then I want to say right is equal to true. OK, so that should now allow us to actually rotate our car left and right by clicking on A and D. If you're wondering how you find other keys, you can look them up. Uh, there's a bunch of I guess these are called constants in Pi game, but you also can just do K underscore and then whatever the lowercase letter is of the key that you want. If you want like a space bar or something, then you would go all capitals and you would go space. Same thing with like shift or enter or any of those keys. If it's not just a standard character, then it's usually in all capitals. OK, well, let's run this, though, and let's see if it works. And now notice if I go left and right, I can rotate my car. And the speed at which I'm rotating my car is defined by that rotation velocity. So you guys can mess around with that. But if you change the rotation velocity, you'll notice you're rotating uh, faster or slower. OK, that's great. So we can now rotate the car off to a good start. That's actually a pretty difficult thing to do. So congratulate yourselves if you made it through that. Now, let's see how we can move the car forward. So we have our self dot velocity. We have the maximum velocity, we have the rotation velocity, we have the angle. The next thing we need is the acceleration because cars don't just instantly reach their top speed. They take a few seconds to get up to speed. When you slam on the gas, you are accelerating, you're adding more force to the tires, you're going faster, and then eventually you re reach kind of like a terminal velocity, which is what we're going to get to here. So I'm going to say self dot acceleration. Did I spell that correctly? Looks like I did is equal to 0.1. So this means every time that we are pressing down on, I guess it's going to be the W key to go forward. We're going to increase the velocity of our car by 0.1. Let's call it pixels per second. That's maybe the unit that we're going at. If you want to accelerate slower, then make this 0.05, right? Or if you want to go faster, make it something like 0.2. Anyways, we have that. Now I want to define a method and I want to call this move underscore forward. Okay, so define move forward. And inside of here, I'm going to take self. Now, all this is going to do is it's going to increase the velocity of my car based on the acceleration. And if I'm already at the maximum velocity, it just won't do anything, but it will move me forward. So inside of here, I'm going to say self dot vel is equal to I guess this is going to be the minimum. Uh, yeah, the minimum of self dot vel plus self dot acceleration and self dot max underscore velocity. So what this is doing is saying, OK, well, if self dot vel is already at the maximum, and we add self dot acceleration, we don't want to go faster than the maximum. So we put self dot uh, max vel here. So if this is greater than this, we just default to the maximum velocity. If it's not, though, then we will increase the speed of the car by the acceleration. Remember, the uh, velocity starts at zero. OK, so that will increase our velocity. Now, that's great, but we actually want to move the car forward. So to do that, I'm going to make a new method called move. I'm going to say define move like this. And inside of here, after I increase the velocity, I'm going to say self dot move. Now, the thing is inside of move, I need to actually calculate what direction I'm going to move my car, because if I'm angled to the right or I'm angled to the left, then I need to move in that appropriate direction. I can't just go up or go right or go left. So I'm going to start by just showing you how we move in one direction. So I guess one plane or one dimension, and then I will show you how we can move in multiple dimensions. So move X and Y based on the direction of our car. And that's going to involve a little bit of trigonometry. Anyways, inside of here, I am going to say self dot X plus equals self dot velocity. So we're just going to move to the right based on whatever our velocity is. That's all we're going to do to start right now. Then we'll get more complex. OK, so now that we've done that, we want to uh, implement another key press to move the car forward. So I'm going to go here and say if keys pi game dot key underscore W, then player car dot move underscore forward like that. So now as we press down the W key, we should increase speed. As soon as we get to the top speed, we'll stay at that speed and we'll move forward. Now, remember, we're not decreasing the velocity here. 
So as soon as we hit the maximum speed, we'll stay at that maximum speed. Even if we let go of the W key, we'll keep going at the same speed. I'll show you how we fix that in a second, uh, but just wanted to note that as we got in here. Okay, so I've loaded. Now notice when I press W, I move over to the right like that. Now I'm going to stop as soon as I let go of the key, but when I press the key again, I'll be moving at the maximum speed. So that's it. That's how you move one direction, right? We just incremented the X of the car and that moved our car over. Okay, that's great. But we ideally would like to be able to move in two dimensions. So this is where I need to pull out uh, the paint program and start showing you some trigonometry. OK, so I'm here in paint and I'm going to start describing the trigonometry that we're going to use to actually move in the direction that we're facing. This is not trivial. This is why I'm in paint. Now, please go easy on me. I am using my mouse, so this is going to be really rough, but it will give you kind of, you know, what you need. <laughs> it would give you the, the basic visualization of this. So the idea is we have some car. Let's say this is our car. Now, if he's just moving this way, all we have to do is move the Y direction. right? If he's facing completely up, then we can just move that direction. If he's facing completely to the right or completely to the left, any of these kind of polar coordinates here, then we can just go in those directions, right? It's very easy. We can just decrement the X, increment the X, decrement the Y, increment the Y. However, what happens if we're moving on an angle like this? Well, it is not so simple now to actually figure out how much we need to move this guy by because we can't just move by the X and we can't just move by the Y. We need to move by both of them. We need to go some amount up, right? And some amount to the right. Now, first of all, what are those amounts? Well, if you said the amount is equal to whatever the velocity of the car is, that's incorrect. The reason for that is if my car has the heading like this, like it's pointing this direction, then the velocity that we have is in that direction, right? So let's say my velocity is four. Well, if that's the case, then this is four. That does not mean that my X is four and my Y is four. In fact, I need to use this total velocity to determine how much X and how much Y I need to go by so that my total velocity accumulates four. Because when I'm moving in two directions, I'm moving, well, two ways. And so I need to sum the velocities, but it's not so it's not as easy as just adding them together to determine what the total velocity is going to be. Now, in this way, we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to say the following. We're going to say, OK, well, this is like a right triangle, right? We want to go some direction X, some direction Y. So let's say X and Y like that. And then this is our total velocity right here. Now, it turns out that we know this angle. And if we know this angle, we can actually figure out what Y and what X are by using trigonometry. So there's a few very popular equations. The way I remember them is the following. We have so, which is SOH, and then we have uh, CA, CAH, like this. So, CA, and then we have TOA as well, TOA. Now, O stands for opposite. Now, this is relative to the angle that you're talking about. So, if I'm talking about this angle right here, the opposite side is Y. So, O, H, A, uh, th those are all sides, okay? That's side lengths is what I'm talking about. And S stands for sine, C stands for cosine, and T stands for tangent. Anyways, I have my angle. So the opposite side is this because that's kind of what the angle is like facing. It's what it's looking at. And the adjacent side is this. It's X because that's what's beside the angle. That's the way you can think of it. So if I want to solve for Y here, keep in mind I know my angle and I know my velocity, then what I need to do is the following. I need to set up my equation. So I'm going to say that the sine of theta is equal to my opposite over my hypotenuse. Now we know the angle and we know the hypotenuse. So H is really V, which is my velocity. Now let's just plug in four because we know the velocity is going to be four. We'll say the maximum velocity is four, right? So now we're solving for O and O is really equal to Y, right? Because that's the opposite side. And so what we do is we say that the sine of theta, which we can calculate, we can just take the sine of the angle, multiplied by four, because we need to take the division and multiply it on this side, is equal to y. So the sine of theta multiplied by our velocity gives us our displacement in y. And then if we go to cosine here, it's just going to be the other way around. We're just going to take the cosine and we're going to multiply that by our velocity, and that is going to give us how much we have for displacement in x. So just basic trigonometry, but I wanted to walk you through that. 
All right, so hopefully that is a decent enough explanation. What we actually do in the code might differ a tiny bit just because of a few factors, but this is the general idea of how we can solve kind of two components based on one velocity and an angle. We're calculating the X and the Y component. That's what they're known as because this is, we can kind of call this a vector, right? Like this line right here. If you know anything about physics, you would call this a vector because we have a angle. So we have a direction and we have a velocity or a magnitude. And then we want to split it into its two components, X and Y. OK, so let's get rid of that and let's implement this. So let's go to our move method. And now rather than moving just by the velocity, we're going to do that kind of fancy equation that we just did. So the first thing I need to do is I need to convert my angle into radians. This is because we use radians in most computer math. Radians is just kind of a special way of calculating angles. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar, 360 is equal to 2 pi in radians and 180 is equal to pi. OK, you don't really need to know that, but just figured I'd let you know. So we're just going to say math dot radians and then self dot angle like that. Notice our angle is in degrees uh, because that's how we want to rotate it. But then when we actually are looking for the components, we need it in radians. Now let's calculate the vertical displacement or the vertical velocity. So we're going to say vertical is equal to and then this is going to be math dot. And I actually think this is going to be cosine for this math dot cosine of radians multiplied by self dot velocity. And then we are going to say that the horizontal is equal to math dot sine of radians multiplied by self dot vel. Then I'm going to say self dot y minus equals vertical and self dot x minus equals horizontal. Now you can switch this to the plus sign and watch what happens. But the reason we, we need minus is because these are actually going to return to us in a lot of instances negative values. And based on the way that we are angling our car and just kind of some other things we've done that I don't really want to get into too much. We need to subtract rather than adding. Now, if we're subtracting, that means if this value is positive, we're going to the left, right? And if we are uh, and sorry, and we're going up, so we're going to the left and up, which is the way that our angle is directing. So that makes sense. And then if this value is negative, that means that we're going to be going to the right and we're going to be going down. I mean, respective to X and Y. Uh, anyways, let's just run our code here and see if this works. And so let's do this. And now notice I can move in whatever direction my car is facing. There you go. So we are now moving our car, which I'm going to call a success. Now, the only thing we need to do here is we need to make it so our car slows down, because as you saw, let me actually run this again. My car just instantly stops, right? If I let go of the key, it just instantly stops. That's not realistic. Our car is going to have momentum. It's going to be moving and it's going to take some friction to slow the car down. So we need some way to actually slow the car down when we're not pressing on the key, which is what we're going to do now. So we're going to implement a method here on our car and we're going to call this reduce underscore speed. And we're just going to take in self. Now, what we're going to do is reduce our speed by half of our acceleration. That is because we can accelerate faster than we can slow down. At least that's the logic that I'm going to use. I'm not sure if that actually applies in the real world, but that's kind of what we're going to do here. Also, just so that we don't slow down super, super quick because we can accelerate really quick. Anyways, you'll see how this works as I get into this method. Now, I just need to look at where I have this in my other code so that I don't mess this up too bad. OK, so we have reduce speed. What we're going to do inside of here is say self dot vel is equal to the maximum of self dot vel minus self dot acceleration over two. And then this is going to be zero. Now, the reason we have this is because if this value for some reason is negative, we don't want to be moving backwards. We just want to stop. And so that's why we have the zero right here. So we change the velocity. And then since we have this move method already set up, we can just say self dot move. So now when we reduce the speed, all that's happening is we're reducing the velocity by half of the acceleration and then we're just going to move. And since this is set up, it'll just work. It's just going to move us slower in whatever direction we're facing. And while we're slowing down, if we're not on the gas, we can still turn, which is a very important thing to keep in mind. OK, so now we have reduced speed. So what we're going to do is go inside of here and we're just going to do something. I'm going to say moved is equal to false. And inside of here, I'm going to say moved is equal to true. Now, the point of this is that if we are pressing the W key, we don't want to reduce the speed. But if we let go of the W speed or W speed, the W key, we do want to reduce the speed. So now I'm going to say if not moved. So if I didn't press forward on the gas, reduce my speed. So I'm just going to say not self, but we'll go with player underscore car. 
and this will be dot reduce underscore speed. So now you should see that when I'm not pressing on the gas, I'm not pressing on the W key, we should reduce the speed. So let's run this code and let's see what we get. So now notice that we slow down, right? And it takes a second to slow down. I'm pressing the key. I let go of the key and we continue going and then we slow down until eventually we stop. All right. So with that said, this long video is now over. If you guys had the patience to sit through all of this, give yourself a pat on the back and not expect it to be this long, but there is a lot of stuff that goes into moving a car in this fashion. In the next video, we're going to set up the actual collision with the track. We're going to make it so you bounce off of the track. We'll then add a finish line and we'll make it so that you can hit the finish line and collide with the finish line. So we'll just be doing collision pretty much in the next tutorial. Then after that, we will implement the computer car. So moving around a path, which is also not that easy to do. And then I guess we'll do four videos for the series. And in the last video, we'll implement all of the nice stuff like the text showing the kind of the stats, the level system, all of that fun stuff. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.